I have three words for you. Korean fire chicken. Oh, holy sh**. Sorry, that was six. Worlds are about to collide. We're spatchcocking a chicken, which we've done before. One of the greatest ways to grill a chicken. You're basically taking a chicken and turning it into an open notebook. It cooks evenly, it cooks beautifully, it's fantastic. But what we apply to that chicken, what goes on that chicken when it goes onto the grill, to soak in, to give flavor, to give heat, to bring an immense amount of deliciousness, with some spice, will be a compendium of Korean seasonings and spices. I just made all that shit up. It sounds pretty good though, doesn't it? Um, a compendium. Compendium. I don't even know what that is. I believe it's some kind of collection, something that perhaps we could look it up and put on the screen. But so let's start with, by spatchcocking. Now look, we've done this before. Come get a bird's eye view of what we're doing because it's important and I want you to do this right. All right, so here's our kid. We'll take him out of our bowl. We'll put him on our cutting board. The chicken breasts are here. Wings, thighs, legs, you get all that. We don't want this part now. We want the backbone here. The way to do this is we're gonna snip out this backbone, a piece right along here that will allow us to open this kit up like a book. So using a good pair of kitchen shears, we're gonna snip, see this is a little tailbone. We're gonna snip all the way up the side, right along like this. Snapping, breaking as we go. One side's done. Turn it like this, and then we'll grab, grab the bone here, and just continue. You're not gonna do this with, you know, your, your children's scissors that they cut construction paper with. You need a decent pair. Cause you're gonna, listen, you're cutting through junk, right? It's this kind of stuff. But you gotta do it. And once it's done, and you wipe your hand because it looks like you've just murdered someone. Now we can take them and flip them over. Like this, right? This is perfect, but he doesn't sit as flat as we want. The way to do that is to open them up here. Use your hands. You'll hear a little cracking. And there you go. If you want to do this, one of those, you're good. But I've done most of the work. This way, spreading them out. Now, the beautiful part is the way it'll cook now. And it will cook nice and even because he's not all round and the stuff on top doesn't cook. It's beautiful. As we put... Oh my God, look at, look at. I can see again. As we prepare to make our sauce for this Korean fire chicken, we have a secret ingredient. It will be the sauce mixture from the, what the are these things called? The hot Korean chicken ramen. This has become a thing of late on the internet. People eating giant, massive freaking bowls of this stuff. I just happened to have some in front of me. Here it is. Oh, I forgot the, uh, the flake. This doesn't add heat, it just adds some greenery and seeds and stuff. Look how pretty that is. Ah, look how beautiful. So when you open a package of these, you get that flake that I just dumped on top, but you also get the spicy, uh, thick, saucy part. And we're gonna add that with a couple other things. But we'll try to bite before we do. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, mama mia. Oh, my forehead's sweating already. Holy shit. Smell the heat from here. Oh, my effing God. God, I want more, but. It's delicious, but it's fing spicy. But you, I'm, I'm oddly attracted back to it.
forehead, upper lip heat. It's pretty good. Yikes. The basis of our sauce for today's Korean fire chicken will be gochujang, this deliciously lovely and spicy Korean hot pepper paste. It figures prominently in many Korean foods. And look how thick it is. Thick and rich and gorgeous. Yum, it's good. And you can, uh, you can smell the heat off it. <laughs> Mouth this <is> fucked. <laughs> I was gonna, wow. <laughs> I was gonna put in two packs of that sauce. Maybe I just need one. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. In goes, we'll say a half a cup of the gochujang, Korean hot red pepper paste. Okay, so let's go, what did I say, half a cup? Let's go half a cup. We want to have a, you know, like a reasonable, whew, I can't talk. We want to have a reasonable amount of this left. Okay. Some soy, but because I don't want this to be too watery, I'm using a soy paste. I know, uh, look, I don't, I don't have to really be that guy, but regular soy will work, but I'm going with this. Some garlic. We want garlic in here because extra garlic flavor will be a very delicious thing. And our garlic press, here we go. And we can put a link for you at the bottom for the press. Lime juice, because a little zing, a little zest is a really good thing here, folks, really good. We'll do one whole lime. And now the flavor packet from our hot chicken flavored ramen. That's right, that's it. That's the one, that's the offender right here. Probably have it upside down. Could go this way or this way. I don't know actually, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to know. Oh, look, I can tell you, cause here it is, here's the right way. No, nope. yeah, that's the right way, like this. So we'll pull, we'll rip, and we'll squeeze in. Look at that black, black, black devil mixture. Should we put two in, Max? Do you want two or do you want one? I think we should put two. Fine. Bust open the other one. One more. Ah. It gets kind of red when it hits the noodles and a little bit of that excess water from boiling them, but it sure comes out like the devil, doesn't it? And a little honey. And no, I'm not trying to dumb this down so there's no flavor. I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons in because a little sweet always makes spicy better. Always. And we mix. Oh boy. Oh, you can smell it from here. It smells fantastic. Gochujang, garlic, thick soy, two packets of the spicy ramen mix and some honey, and we'll dip, and we'll paintbrush. Oh, you lovely little thing, you. You found your blue brush. I found my blue brush, yeah. Where was it? It was, uh, oh shit, you know what I need to do? Stand by, sorry. I need to take a little bit out because I want to use what's extra in there to paint on the chicken, and I don't want to contaminate with like the raw chicken. Save a little bit for after. And we're back. <laughs> so when you get it all coated, we're gonna go this skin side down first on the grill. And once we do, we'll paint the other side, the gnarly side, because we want flavor all the way around. So just work your way all the way around. Leg tips. Okay, we'll just build up a nice little layer right here. So if you wanted to do this part in advance, give it a couple hours of marinating time, by all means you could do that. Just paint it up, throw it in the fridge. But when you go to cook it, take it out of the fridge about a half an hour before you put it on the grill because you don't want to cook the chicken cold. 
You want to cook it about room temperature. Half hour will get you close enough to that. We're set up for two zone cooking. That means this side is very hot. Oh, very hot. I might turn it down a bit. And this side is not on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sear. Couple minutes, couple minutes, turn it over, couple minutes, and then bring it over to this side to finish cooking, and it will cook more like an oven. Get what I'm saying here? Because it's using the ambient temperature of the whole thing, it cooks like an oven as opposed to sitting on top of flame going That's the way it will cook beautifully without burning up all the skin. And that's what you want. That's what I want. Here we go. So you just pick up your little friend, bring him over, and down you go. That's the ugly side, but we're gonna fix that. We're back. Oh, sorry, a little piece of organ meat. Not everybody's favorite thing to see. But look, it's the reality. You're cooking a, an animal, he said, wearing his vegan shirt. Which, by the way, does not mean I'm a vegan. If you read the shirt, you'll get the meaning. And by the way, it's on the website. If you'd like to entertain your friends while you cook mass quantities of animal carcass on your grill and <laughs> wearing a vegan shirt at the same time. Here's a rule that we use in grilling. If you can hold your hand about two inches above the grill surface for longer than three seconds, it's not hot enough to grill on. But it is hot enough to do indirect cooking on, right? This side, one, I can't do it, it's too hot. This side, one, two, three, four, nothing. That's how I want it. That's how I want it. So it's been a couple minutes now. I'm gonna give this guy a little turn. Just like this. And if I lift up a leg, look at those beautiful char marks. That's why you grill, folks, because that is adding flavor. If it didn't, then we just microwave the shit out of everything. And we're ready to flip, so. Oh, motherfucker! Sorry, didn't mean to swear that much, but look at that. That's unbelievably gorgeous. But now's the time to come in with more sauce. Now look. Hi, baby. So, look, respect your food. I know we're eating an animal and. I'm speaking now to the actual vegans of the world that don't get it and don't want to get it, and that's okay, but even though I do, I can still have a level of respect for this, and I want the food to be as good as it can be. I think if the chicken could talk to me right now, he'd be saying some shit like, look, I know you've killed me, and maybe not you, Sam, but somebody did, but if you're going to eat me now, which obviously you're going to, I want to be as delicious as I can. So, do the right thing, Sammy boy. That's gorgeous as f Is it not? That's ridiculous. That's why we spatchcock, folks. That right there. Okay, we give it a little turn. And notice I'm now using spatulas because I don't want to mark up or rip any of the beautiful top side. And I will continue to use them to maintain the level of gorgeousness that this chicken has willed me to maintain for him or her. After a couple more minutes here, under we go. We carefully, carefully, carefully bring our little buddy over onto the very low side. And now we're gonna use the grill like an oven. The hot from here will make everything good. Now we just leave him for a bit. So now that he's there, now you're just cooking a chicken. Just like inside your house, in the oven, on a regular old Sunday night, if that's when you cook chicken. I'm looking for about 160 degrees in the breast. And I know the rule is 165, but there's always carryover heat. Always. So if I yank it at 165, it's going to creep up to maybe 168, 169, and that's starting to get into that dry zone. So. I pull it at 160, even 158, nine, and it gets to where I want it, and it's still moist and perfect and delicious and beautiful. Instant read thermometer will be your friend. 
This is the guy that I use. We'll put a link to one. I always have it with me. You don't have to guess anymore, folks. This is not the dark ages. We're not cavemen throwing a hunk of meat in the fire and hoping for the best. Actually, they probably just ate the shit raw. I don't know what they did, who knows. But we are slightly more civilized. We can measure temperature. We can be accurate. We don't have to fuck up. And you're no less of a, uh, of a man or a woman or an adult by using a thermometer. No, no. No, no, quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. You're a person who cares. You want to make sure that you're doing the right thing for your friends and family. It's that simple. I could talk all day. Do you want me to keep going or I'm good for a minute? I think I'm good. Jilly brings up a good point. Any merchandise that you buy from us, the links that are below the videos, we give 10% to Feeding America. And as the name implies, they help people that are struggling to put food on their tables every day. 10%, we've done it since the beginning, we'll do it today. You buy this vegan shirt and people that are vegan and hungry, they'll get helped out. No discrimination. So once it's lived this direction for a bit, let's give them a little turn. Everybody's cooperating, except this one wing. Part of him still wants to fly away. Sorry, little guy. It is not gonna happen. Oh, do you see what's happening here? Come, there's sizzling going on, bro. Sizzling. Here we go. Sizzling. The juices, everything, doing the right thing. And I've given him one final little lacquering, and now, time to come off. Here we go. Look it. Look at the little fellow. Damn, son, look how pretty this kid is. Oh, glistening and the only thing we're gonna give him, Maxi, is some sesame seeds. Are you ready, Maxi? Do it. Dispensing the seeds now. You know what that makes me think? Should put some freaking sesame oil in it. Damn, hey, fly, get out. We're working here. Fucking beautiful though, isn't it? Perfect. Let me tell you where I want to go, Max. Look, look at these juices down here. Oh. I'm going to go right here, this, this guy. Look at left, separate. Look at that. Apart from the fly, a perfect leg-thigh combination. Gorgeous. Mmm. I'm so happy. And now, shall we? Oh, juicy, tender, ah, hot as balls, ow, I can't do it, I'm going to have to eat it off my knife, I'm sorry. Are we sure about that? Yes, we're sure. Sam the cooking guy takes fatal bite of spatchcock <laughs> chicken. I, I just can't, it, it's, the, my fingers, it's got heat over here. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Oh. Holy sh. There's that little back end heat. Oh. Hot lip. That's how you decide how hot something is. How hot is it? Was it lip hot or was it lip and forehead hot? <laughs> It's lip and forehead hot. Wow, but the flavor, that's the thing. You know, sometimes people just like dump hot sauce on stuff and you won't taste anything. You just get straight heat. And to me, that's kind of ridiculous. What is not ridiculous though, is when you get gorgeous heat with beautiful flavor following it up. It's sticky, it's lacquered, it's got the heat. It's got deep, deep flavor from the garlic, from the soy, from the fucking everything. Oh my God. Oh. This is magnificent. I'm just gonna stand here 
and eat this whole thing. And it just occurred to me that I don't know where you live, but maybe you don't have access to gochujang. Or, or the... <clears throat> or the spicy hot uh, Korean noodles. We'll put a link so you can get them. And none of it's expensive. And it's all hugely delicious. There are other things on my website using gochujang. So don't feel like the fucking guy made me buy this like $4.98 thing of gochujang. I used four tablespoons. Yes, it was delicious, but now what the hell do I do with it? Gochujang salmon. Gochujang salmon. Ah. Oh. I love this. I love this and I hope you will too. Because the goal is for you. I could love my food all day long, but we want you to love it, right? Right. Right. All right. Thanks for being here. Enjoy this. Don't eat the same thing all the time. I feel very good about myself today. I'm not sure my mouth would agree with me. But the chicken would be proud. He'd be like, ow, oh, that leg hurts, but I know I'm delicious, so I'm okay with the whole thing. <laughs>